Yo, what's good? This is Kelby Cannon, publisher, making the magazine, founder of the membership. We live at the making it kickback. Yo, yep. um, I got my man, Mister Two Seventeen. What's good with you, brother? What's up? What do you do, man? I'm a, uh, it's a pleasure to be here, man. It's a pleasure. I'm really pleasure. excited to be here for sure. All right, so let's just jump into this thing. Okay, for sure. Because you've been doing music since you was very young. Yes, you see me for a long time. For a long time. <laughs> for a long, long time. When did when did you start? Doing beats, doing music. Twelve years old, two thousand six. The middle of the middle of the Atlanta hood renaissance. <laughs> D4L, Crime Mob, Fabo, Lil yeah. John. That whole wave yeah. got me going for sure. And, and we just gonna start. The, you hopped off the porch, mm -hmm. like many of trappers. Yeah. Except you was trapping beats for sure, most definitely. Because I know, I know, I know that first version of Fruity Loops was cracked. No, no, I got it. <laughs> the first version of Fruit Loops I got uh -huh. was the demo version, straight the from demo? the site. Okay. Twocows.com. Y'all know it's my <laughs> www.twocows.com. Download FL Studio 6. I got it straight from the site. It was a demo version. It wasn't okay. cracked. Okay. Let me okay. tell you something. Now, hold on. So you okay. had to export the files before you said it? No, let me tell okay. you. I didn't even know how to do that. Okay. I, I put this on everything, y'all. Okay. Bless, bless you on 217. I used to write, a, I used to draw a notepad, right? Uh -huh. And draw the grids. Uh -huh. And I used to look at the, the where the sequence is it, and I used to know, I used to draw. You used to manually save them. I used to draw them in <laughs> so I can open it up and then re put it. I'll look at the, the, the chart that I drew and I'll go back and I'll re put it exactly the same way. Crazy. <laughs> I didn't even know how to save it. Look, let me tell you something. So I'm 12 years old making right. beats. My OGs, they like 19 years old. I'm in the hood, letting right. him play beats. I said, I make beats too. They said, nigga, no, you don't make no beats. I said, I do. I just don't know how to save them. Right. So my, my big brother, you know what I'm saying, he, my, you know, my partner at the time, he pulled yeah. me to the side. He said, you make beats for real? I said, yeah, bro, I really make beats. He said, go foul, mm -hmm. export as wave. Okay. And then you're going to drag it. You need to go to get you some blank CDs from Walmart. Yeah. So I stole some blank CDs from Walmart. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the I, I stole them from now Walmart. The right. I stole a pack of 10 blank CDs from Walmart. I went and made the beat and I exported it as Wave. Right. Put it on Windows Media Player and burnt it to disc. Uh -huh. When I took it back to the hood, them folks could not believe it. Right. They couldn't believe it. Right. They couldn't believe I was making beats for real. All right. Yo, that's crazy. Oh, man. So they didn't believe you. Mm -mm. But you showed them. For sure. So here's the thing. Who was the first person that rapped over one of your beats? First person I rap on beat. Shouts yeah. out to my boy Donnie Money, man. We used to have a lot of little see Atlanta, we wasn't big on we wasn't big on Bloods and Crips and GDs right. like that. Not for real, for real. But we was big on repping our hood, where right. we was from. So, you know, I'm from Zone 6, man. It used to be a lot of little gangs and stuff and cliques. You know, if you're repping Glenwood, you got Glenwood. You got just different little crews and stuff. So, there was a crew called Young Ammunition Posse. You know what I'm saying? From 2nd Avenue, they rapped on my beat, uh, my partner, Donnie Money. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, man, the song was horrible, but I was so happy yeah, that people yeah. was rapping on my beats. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when the gangsters were like, you got, man... You see how I'm looking right now. I right. just started growing the beard. Right. When I cut my beard off, they said I look 21, 20. Uh -huh. Imagine me at 12 years old. Yeah. Baby face. Right. Real young. You know what I'm saying? And you got these young street gangsters rapping on my beats. That's the ultimate stamp. Like, right. I was stamped in yeah. off my music. You feel me? I didn't have to yeah. do nothing That's else. That's when it turned into Mr. You know, yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. <laughs> we put that Mr. on it. Yes. <laughs> now, nah, like, and the reason why I ask that because it's like, I think... So it's so often that we all we get caught up in having these conversations and mm -hmm. Grammys and all these big achievements, but mm -hmm. it's like there are so many little wins along the way. For sure. Like the first time, like, yo, you able to export your stuff on the wave file, so play it in the car. The yeah. first time you're able to do that. <laughs> yeah. Like not listening on the headphones, but putting it in the car and mm -hmm. see people's reaction to your beat, to hear whether the song turns out great or not, mm -hmm. but the fact that this thing that you made inspired somebody else to create something and build on top of it. Mm -hmm. And they gonna love it regardless. So, you know, they jumping around, wrapping yeah. it, and gassing it up. And it, it's like, it's all of these, these little wins along the journey mm -hmm. that I feel like often we, we don't put enough attention on. Mm -hmm. And so we put all this attention on like the Grammys and the big things to mm -hmm. the point where a lot of artists and producers and creators forget to mark the small victories. For sure. So that's that's why I wanted to start at the like the beginning, beginning, mm -hmm. and so like from there to 
linking up with street execs, linking mm-hmm. up with bankroll. Like, what was what happened in between Young Ammunition Posse mm-hmm. and having one of the hottest records in man. the city? <laughs> a lot of man, man, really dark days, bro. A lot right. of dark days, bro. Like people don't understand. Like when you chase your dream. Like as mm-hmm. I look back at it now, because I'm I'm far more grown and mature. I was depressed a lot of days, bro. Yeah. Um, I rap. I did every open mic that you can think of. I did the P Brown open mics. I did the Street Talk open mics. I did the um, uh, Apache. Car and Bike Show. I no, did I the Apache. The Apache. <laughs> I did the Apache. I did the Cream Ultra Lounge with yeah. uh, Tracy oh Big God. Deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did every avenue, and you know, um, so that's from. I'm start making beats at twelve. Well, you didn't do every avenue. You ain't never had no membership. What we're making? It, yeah. We're making. No, yeah. I ain't had one. I think. I think we bumped. See? I, I think See? we bumped. I'm just. Listen, I think we bumped. I'm tired look, of this. I brought you here. I, this we is bumped. the expose. <laughs> this, this is my. Uh, what we do? I did do something <laughs> making them mad. What did I do for making them mad? I did something. I know I did something. I had to do something. No, you didn't. Mad. But it's all good. Oh, for sure. But for we sure. doing this. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying. Like, it's, I did Battleground thing. Monday. Battleground Monday. Wait, uh, uh, Gambino. Gambino. I did yes. that. You know what I'm saying. So we did all that, and then it came to a point where I hit a brick wall. Enough for you. You That's know what, what it was. No, you definitely I wasn't Atlanta. Atlanta I think you. I think you was just trying to tax me, uh, arm and a leg. And I no, probably was just I was broke. Ne- I probably I was just <laughs> broke. I probably was just broke. That's how that arm was. And a leg. You know what I'm saying? But, just an arm. It's an arm. It's an arm. Right. But, but no, look, let me hold. Let me, I gotta hold you right cool. there. Whatever you was charging, yeah, and our charging to this day is worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. I was when you, man when I was brushing shows with everybody. I was 18 years old. Yeah, I was 19 when I. Got with Street is X, you feel me? Yeah. So you know, I'm just doing the best as I could. You feel me? No, no. And here's the and here's the here's the thing. Like so, it was uh, I think we was at the Apache and like was up there and was talking and um, and then I was like, we were at the time we were doing this thing called Kill the Track. So I would just partner up with a producer who, who mm-hmm. already had motion. We had did Zaytoven, uh, we did uh, Writer's Block, Cassius J, Looney Tunes, mm-hmm. and we would do a beat and put it up on the site and just let all the artists write records to mm-hmm. it and submit it back and then let the producer pick the one that they like the best mm-hmm. and do bring them in and do That's something That's fine. That, we need a 2024 version of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's a lot of stuff people doing now. Like, we've been doing this for years. Mm-hmm. But I actually, we was at Apache and, I, um, and we was just moving fast. And I was like, yo, I was like, I want to do something with you. What? How much for a beat? Or uh, like, no, I want to do something. I kind of mm-hmm. went over it with you, and it was like, what the price is? Like something. Mm-hmm. And it was like, cause you was in your shit at that mm-hmm. time. Like it was like, it was like, it's cool. Mm-hmm. Like what, whatever. But we never really got to link up on it. Mm-hmm. But it's like watching your growth and navigating through this, cause I understand how it is. Like I used to be an artist, mm-hmm. so the reason I do everything in a way for it to make sense mm-hmm. for everybody. And so it's a lot of stuff like it's a lot of people who do bad business, mm-hmm. just period, or do things that don't necessarily benefit the artist. It looks like it will benefit the artist, but it won't. And the reason why is because they don't charge enough to do the things that they need to do to benefit mm-hmm. the artist. Like we do our events during South by Southwest, we charge more than other people for sure. But we actually run thousands of dollars worth of ads, and mm-hmm. we fly artists in, and we do all this other stuff. We have brunch, we have mm-hmm. all. So when you come. You're getting like 15 interviews from media outlets. You're performing. You got graphics up on the For screen. Sure. It's like, oh, that's why. Like so, and so like as a as an artist and a producer and a creative navigate this space. Like there are so many different platforms, and it's like catering to a young artist who don't have a big budget. For sure. For sure. And it's like, and and I and I think that's one of the difficulties is a lot of times, everyone kind of blowing smoke mm-hmm. because they want to, they got to tell you what you want to hear to get you to spend whatever little you have, mm-hmm. and then you start thinking it's you, mm-hmm. like you're the reason why this ain't working. It's like because everybody tell you, and you keep running in the same circle. So when you when you speak to that about them, them dark times and like that that depression. Yeah. Like really, like what were some of the things like that that had you in that space mm-hmm. when, when you were going for sure, that? man? Um, the biggest thing was every artist from Atlanta wants to perform at Birthday Bash. Right. If you're from ATL and yeah. you call yourself a rapper, you're gonna at least want to do Birthday Bash one time. Yeah. We did it. Me and my crew, we did Birthday Bash. We opened up. We got offered our first major record deal. Right. I'm 19, bro. I looked through the contract. It's horrible. <laughs> I did not know. 
Nobody ever taught me the game. I didn't know all you do is go send it to an attorney, bro. Yeah. In the, in the game of business, if nobody ever told you this, remember this. Don't get mad at the first contract. It's always the worst. Yeah. Send it back. Get it revised. Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought they was trying me. I said, no, we ain't going to do it. You're not going to have my masters. You're not going to whoop the whoop. And I told my crew, bro, we ain't going to do it, bro. Another deal going to come. Yeah. It never came. Right. We, just, we, we on the peak of the world. Just did birthday bash. Two months later, I'm back working at Kroger. I'm right. back working at IHOP. My, my whole crew mad at me. We blew our shot. We blew our moment. Dang, we really did. I don't know what's going to come next after this. And I just sat in it. Yeah. I, I gave up, for real. And if it wasn't for my good friend, DJ JT, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be sitting right here. You know what I'm saying? And that's a whole other story. One thing about me, and I tell producers all the time, I didn't get in the game by solely producing. I've been a cameraman. I've been shooting films since I was in seventh grade. Right. I graduated from high school. My mama brought me the, at the time, it was the top of the line, Canyon Rebel T3i. That was yeah. the- I got one in the other room. That was the, tr <laughs> that was the yeah. camera at the time. Yeah. She bought me that for graduation. With that camera, how I was sustaining myself, yeah. aside from Kroger and IHOP, I was shooting music videos. Okay. I shot music videos for 21 Savage, Young Marlon Quill, Young Nudie, Lil Donald, yeah. Various vlogs and different things for what up and coming artists. What did you shoot for uh, Lil Donald? I did Juice. You did Juice. I did. I got the Juice. I it's did. It's my time now. <laughs> I did Hey. Okay. Yep. I did Hey, and I got the Juice for Lil Donald. Okay. Yep, I did that for him. Nah, that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't even know that. Like that's like, yeah. That's, this and, is this news to me. Like and how DJ <laughs> JT came in is, um, when he found out I was giving up on music, he said, "Bro." You still doing camera work? I said, yeah. He said, bro, don't get all the way out. Yeah. Just have at least one foot in. So he was carrying me around, and I was doing his camera work. We did DC Young Fly before he blew up. Right. We did TK and Cash before they blew up. We did right. Bloody J before he got caught up in the streets. Yeah. We did a, a, a lot of people. Yeah. And lo and behold, guess who we run into? Bankroll Fresh. Right. I do Bankroll Fresh's interview. I edited it real good for him. And DJ JT said, look, man, he up and coming. Tap in with him. I said, bankroll, I make beats, and I'm a cameraman. If you need me for anything, let me know. He said, oh, yeah, yo, nigga, we going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Lock in with him. <laughs> it took me two months to lock in with him. Right. But when we finally locked in, we became the best of friends. Right. And I was his cameraman, his Instagram manager, and producer right. to the day he died. And it's like, so that's like wearing a lot of hats. For sure. And, and this is really like a, a beautiful thing. Like, I, like, cause I talk to a lot of artists, and so often the artists feel like I need a team, mm -hmm. and I think their idea of needing a team means that they're the quarterback. For sure, it's like you might just be the kicker. Mm -hmm. You might be the tight end. Like for some, like someone else might be the quarterback. Yes, like, but you still get a ring. Mm -hmm. You still get to contribute. You mm -hmm. still get to do what you're great at. Yes. And, and and that's the the like when you when you tell that story like like cuz I can identify with that. I understand like as a as an artist like I don't think many artists can, may be able to relate mm -hmm. to to being there. Yeah. So soon. Yeah. And feel like oh shit, I fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> like cuz that's a different level like and so but having been like I've had major labels. I used to be an artist. I had mm -hmm. major labels looking at me and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But it's like when I quit, like I actually just didn't want to do music anymore. For sure, yeah. And 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 much to like some of the stuff that I know, and we're gonna talk about that too, mm -hmm. with just the energy mm -hmm. that's that's going on right now. Um, so so but it it's very real, like the fact that when you when you speak on the situation, how opening yourself to doing more than just what you think you're meant to do. For sure. And I think that's kind of the, um, one of the things that I see hold a lot of independent artists back and creatives, mm -hmm. um, because I think every creative wants to just focus on doing the creative, but yeah. it's like, that's not what you get paid to do. Not even cre just the creative part. They want to, we want mm -hmm. to uh, highlight and promote ourselves. Yeah. When I tell people, man, you know, Pushing somebody else might get you in the door. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was, I was, I was basically almost bankroll's assistant <laughs> when it came to social media, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and his content, what he putting out 
from his photos, media, and even some of his beats. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was supporting him, and I didn't even care if I was on camera or not. Right. Me and him don't got that much photos and videos together because I would say, bro, it's about you. Yeah. I'm putting you, and then that gave me the leverage, the platform to be seeing myself. You know, so sometimes you just got to be able to sit in the back seat for a season. You know what right. I'm saying? Just for a season. You're going to get your time to shine. What you do for others, God going to do for you. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And that's, you know, as I see you run around here, you know what I'm saying, like a chick with the head cut off, <laughs> doing for so many people, it's only right that it comes back to you. It's only right. It's only right. It's It got to. That's yeah. the way, that's, that's God's law. What you do for others, it's going to, you reap what you sow. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, man, I just want to, Bless you in word For the deeds That you're doing For people like me You know what I'm saying yeah. Calling me and This is helping me You feel yeah. me So I appreciate it Nah and that's, and that's kind of the Like Getting into it. Well, I want to get into that Like um, Because I know that um, After After the untimely passing mm -hmm. Of Bankroll Like There was a change in you Yeah, A change with you And I, I really wanted you to to speak on how that affected you mm -hmm. and 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 shaped you into the man that you are now for right? sure because it's it's definitely a different you yeah most definitely um man God spoke to me right I don't know the guy you believe in but the God of the universe yeah. and like like um, he spoke to me I heard his voice telling me no like I'm right here at the door like you you ever heard I gotta get my foot in the door yeah. It's a it's a it's a figurative door, but it's yeah. also a literal door. It's a threshold that you have to cross over into superstardom, with your mind, heart, soul, and spirit. You have to cross this threshold. You have to take on whatever it comes with. And I was w ready and willing to walk through that door and take it. And right when I got my foot in, God said no. He said you. He said don't do it. He said turn around. You're going down the wrong path. And I said, what about bankroll? Because I'm like, if I'm going down the wrong path, what about break road? Before the, before the thought can even process in my heart, God immediately answered me and said he's not going to make it. And I didn't understand what that meant. You know what I'm saying? I didn't understand what it meant. That was in 2015, July of 2015. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, after uh, I heard God speak to me, you know, uh, I told everybody I quit. You know, I told bank I quit. I told everybody I'm not doing music. And, you know, I hate that. I hate that. This story had to involve drugs, but it involved drugs. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was on a shroom trip. You know what I'm saying? It was good the first couple of hours. It went down bad the next couple of hours. <laughs> but you know, the thing is, it's like, it's natural. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and it's like, like, and it, just my personal opinion mm -hmm. is like, sometimes it's like, even, even like, Wine, like alcohol, like it's like all of this stuff is like they drink it in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Jesus turned water to wine. Like mm -hmm. it's like it's it's the excessive use and how yeah. you use anything. Anything could be mm -hmm. a drug. Our phones, yeah, like Not for real, should really be it. a class yes. A narcotic, like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Schedule One, like mm -hmm. whatever. Like it's like it's it's about how it is, but like being able to like certain things can give you clarity, mm -hmm. like like or. Have those neurons firing mm -hmm. in a way. Let me that tell they you something, don't. man. What's so crazy about it? R.I.P. to Maddie P. Have you mm -hmm. do you know? Have you heard of Maddie P. Maddie P. From Edgewood, he used to be like yep. the King Edgewood. Almost, okay. you know what I'm saying? Uh, before we did the drugs, bro. You know, he told me. Mm -hmm. He said, "All right, man." He was he's a real groovy type character. Yeah. He was like, "All right, man." Whatever questions you've been searching for, uh -huh. or whatever you've been looking for in your heart, bro. You're going to find it when you do this drug, bro. You're going to find it. I didn't know that's what I was going to bump into, bro. Yeah. I, didn't know, I didn't know I was going to hear God. Yeah. And you know ever since then. So to go back to the story, uh, I, I told everybody to quit and whatnot. You know, and I did quit for a couple months. But after yeah. a couple months, I said, bro, you know what? Maybe it was just the drugs. Yeah. It was, it's the drugs, bro, man. Well, I'm, let me get back to it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I got back to it, but I was more keen on my spiritual sense. I started going back to church. Right. I started reading the Bible. I started praying. I started doing all that. But I still got back in my groove. I finished my movie, Hot Lanta, featuring Daisy Banks, Light Skin, Keisha, Yummy Pearl, yeah. Bank Refresh, a lot of upcoming stars today. I finished that. Had the movie premiere, and I was finna go back into the game. You know what I'm saying? I linked up with 2 chains. I made my first album placement with him, Collie Grove. 
And as I was projecting to, man, after I made my first album, it was number up. That was March 4th. This is March 4th, Mm -hmm. around 2 o'clock. I called Bankroll. I said, bro, man, thank you for everything. Thank you for introducing me to Travis Porter, the 2 chains. He's like, no, bro, like, we in this together. He was just really, he was all about camaraderie and togetherness. Right. And I was like, thank you, bro. And I was like, what do I do now? He said, just just keep working. So we were scheduled to go out of town that night. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And uh, man, my manager said, bro, you always with Bankroll. You made your first album placement. Let's go out and let's celebrate. So I text Bankroll. This is around 7 o'clock. Never forget, I said, hey, bro, I'm just going to stay in the, t- in the city tonight. And he said, okay. The last time we talked on the phone, I did. We did tell each other we love each other, though. Right. So, But the last text message was, I'm going to stay in town. And he said, Okay. I'm lit. I'm turned up. I'm in the club. I got this girl I've been wanting to get with since high school. Mm-mm. She down now. You yeah. feel me? Everybody's down. 217 Man, going up. Everybody's <laughs> down now, bro. And, bro, at the time, it was a song by Meat Meal called It's Levels to This. Yeah. You remember that song? Yeah. It's crazy seeing it play out in your life. Yes. When you, it's real levels. Like, there are certain girls, they may do like you, but they'll never talk to you because you're not. On their you, level. Not like even. That, not their I, I, level, learned, but I, the level that they aspire the to. The level. Yeah. You have to. Women want men that's a, a level above. Yeah. They want. They don't. They if they might rock with you on a level if you're at the same level. Right. Few women will rock with you a level below. Right. And when I start getting on this, I start seeing the same girls that wouldn't give me no time. And you know what? I respected the game. I wasn't mad. One thing I learned is to respect the game, bro. Yeah. It's called the game because you yeah. have to play the game. People was coming around. People that, you know, did me dirty, they came back around and they had to learn, don't burn a bridge. It's, you only get played if you don't know you're getting played. Mm. And I, I kept a naive face. I, I played like I was green the whole time. The whole time I knew what I was doing. But anyway, I'm with this girl. I'm lit. We turned up. We partying. And... Right before, like, you know, I'm finna leave the club, with the whoop, the whoop, I get a phone call. And I usually don't answer the phone in the club. Right. I get a call. But I'm so lit, man. Throw it off, all that. I answer the phone. What's up? Bankroll just got shot. What? I dropped down to the flow immediately because I knew whoever wanted to shoot him, I knew they wasn't going to shoot him to warn him. I know they wasn't going to shoot him just to shoot him. I know they was going to shoot him to kill him. And I knew if they would have shot him, they would have killed him. So I already knew. I dropped, I'm talking about, to this day, I have a bad, I don't know what's the word, association with the, I don't know, but it's, when I hear the song Work from Rihanna, mm-hmm. it immediately takes me back to that day because that's the song that I was playing right. when I heard the news. I dropped to the middle of the floor like I was a dead man. I'm talking about collapse on the floor, boohoo crying. Everybody run to me. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Bankroll just got shot. What? It's, I'm talking about, but at the same time, it's so crazy, man, how life goes. Because at the same time, even though real life was going on around my close circle, the whole club was partying. Right. Like, that's how that's what goes. In the, and I even keep that in my mind spiritually. When you die, somebody's going to be born. When you die, somebody's going to be celebrating. When you die, like... Bro, life ain't what it, you think it is, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I learned the meaning of life. So when all that blew over, when Bankroll truly died, I thought about when God spoke to me. And I said, bro, God really did speak to me. Yeah. It was God. And ever since then, March 4th, 2016, I've been following this path. I left the game. People don't know, like, you know, the, I had a couple hits before I really bowed out. I did Neat by Q Money. I did a couple of records for Q Money. I did a couple of records for Lil Pump. Uh... Let me see who else. I did a couple of big records, you know what right. I'm saying? Before I got my bread right and I was able to fully just leave. You know what I'm saying? Right. And um ever since then, from from 2017 to now, I've been doing positive church music, church music, viral TikTok songs. Right. I could have worked with the baby. I could have worked with Gucci Man. I could have worked with Pusha. I could have worked with Lil Uzi. I could have worked with Cardi. I could have worked with all these people. But once I got the realization of what the music does to the people, minds. And spirits and souls of people, I say I can't be associated with that. And if you've been looking for me, that's where I've been this whole time. That's where I've been this whole time. Now, that's the difficult part. Mm-hmm. It's like, I think, so it, it's the, the Illuminati, mm-hmm. the music industry, and how you got to sell your soul to get in the music industry. Mm-hmm. And I think people take it very literal. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's like, 
to attain a certain level of success. Let me tell y'all something, man. For my whole time of being in the industry, I ain't never seen nobody do no blood sacrifice. I ain't nobody seen no cut no. I ain't seen no weird stuff. Right. What I will tell you is, I see a lot of street stuff. Right. Which is equally demonic. What? All right. So that's equally. where I, that's where I was going with it. Equally is, in a sense. The the sacrifice mm-hmm. you do have to sacrifice. Yeah, you do have to sacrifice self. Yeah, like, like whoever you are or you thought you were mm-hmm. or what your your morals and your mm-hmm. integrity are. Yeah. to attain a certain to attain certain levels of success mm-hmm. It's like one of the things for me. Like, uh I like I I have a certain level mm-hmm. like that I operate mm-hmm. at. Like I know it's like I don't. I don't. It's certain people that I won't do business with, or certain situations that I stay from, because I'm mm-hmm. not. I'm not gonna be fake. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like, if I don't feel the music, if I don't feel the energy, I'm not gonna put on and do the. Mm-hmm. It's like I can still do business, yeah, but I'm not gonna do the extra for sure, for sure. <laughs> and so, like, because people, the egos in the industry, it's certain. There are people who are willing to. Is like everyone says they're real until they put in a real situation. Mm -hmm. And then you see how many people, like all these stories coming out about Puffy, like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I know it was at one time. And it was like, so, so you, while all this was going on, Mm -hmm. you knew about it. You was good with it. Yeah. But, but now it's Mm -hmm. okay to talk about it. And it's, and, and that's where, like when I say that, that kind of the sacrifice is mm-hmm. who you you thought yeah. you were a good person. You thought you were gonna do this. Yeah, like if it was, if you was really standing on that, you should have spoke up then. But you was yeah. loving what you was receiving from the benefits of hanging with him, so you kept your mouth shut. Yeah, and that's how and that's how you that's how you get far. There's two ways you can get far in this game. You right. can have morals. You can have integrity. That's but keep your word. mouth shut. <laughs> yeah. Keep your mouth shut. Yeah. that's all you gotta do. You can you can stand on what you stand on. But don't talk about what everybody else got going on. Because if you open your mouth and talk about what they got going on, they're going to kick you out. Why are you here? If you have a problem with what we got going on, why are you in the game? Go to church. Go do something else. Don't come over here telling us what to do. Yeah. That's the whole vibes. You can stand on morals, principles, all that stuff. Just don't don't talk about, don't see nothing, don't hear nothing. Yeah. I hear it and I see it and I can't help but talk about it. And I can't help but stay away from it. And that's why I stayed away. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. And so, like, but and so here's the thing in that is when you, I guess, put on your heart or you feel a moral obligation or responsibility um, to try to leave the world in a better condition, to mm-hmm. do something to mm-hmm. affect positive change. Um, like, that's like, like when I was young, like, hey, like, I used to be. 19, 20, like worried about everything. Like, mm-hmm. and um, I had my first son, and I realized, like, like stress and trying to change the world. And it's like, I can only change his world. I can for change sure. what I can do for him. I, and I could change my world. I could change how I see the world. And that changes the world. Like, because just like you said, the um like when you broke down in the the club and you were in your moment with your people everybody still partying but your world was shooken mm-hmm. everybody else's work 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 but your world is in a completely and just realizing is like my my thing like I thought like you watch the the movies where the what is it the multiverse where. It's like all these different worlds. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Different scenarios. Yeah, yeah for sure. And th- and that's like I believe that's true. Mm-hmm. It's just it's it's not literal. Mm-hmm. It's like so, and that's how I would always explain it to artists. Like you got your whole life mm-hmm. that you concerned with. So we all live on the same planet, but you live in your own world. Mm-hmm. Dimension 276, <laughs> 217. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm in my own. So we here on the same planet, but I'm worried about, I gotta get home to these kids, my mom, and there's like all these different things. Mm-hmm. That's my world and you and yours. And then it'd be like these little crossovers. For sure, for sure. And so it's like like having that understanding that that everybody has their own world that they have to that they have to tend to. And so when it's like when you get into this space where all right, I I'm moving out mm-hmm. and I'm 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 restructuring my world mm-hmm. so that I can move in accordance with my principles. But then, in your world, you still have 
you cross over into other people's lives and mm -hmm. other people play a role in your world mm -hmm. and you want to spread that positivity or have a positive effect on their world too and through your music and yeah. through the way that you move but it's like the systems and the game mm -hmm. understanding that the game doesn't necessarily reward that mm -hmm. like you don't get extra points for no. dribbling well mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, either you shoot from here or you shoot from there. Like, mm -hmm. those, are, those are your options. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how do you balance that where it's it's the the positive things that you want to do? Like, like you know, we just play the music. Everybody popping their head up, mm -hmm. going crazy. Like, yo, like, loving the music, mm -hmm. loving the tracks, and then using that as a conduit to also affect positive change in mm -hmm. other people's world. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you balance that? For sure. Well, the Bible says we are in the world. Just don't be of it. Mm -hmm. We got to be, where else I'm going to go? Yeah. <laughs> where else I'm going to go? Who else, if I go to the fish market, we don't know what these folks got going on. Yeah. At Burger King, McDonald's, Walmart, we don't know. We don't know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We have to, I have to interact in this world. I have to, you know what I'm saying, to a certain extent, no matter what, we all are involved in the system. I got a social security number. We pay taxes. I receive benefits from being in this... I utilize it. I utilize it for what I want to do with it. You know what I'm saying? I got the power in my hands. Um, I play beats. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I got to clear it. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, you know. Um, and I'm very flexible with people, but I got I got to be in this world. I got to utilize to make a change in the world or in the surrounding worlds of other people. You have to go into somebody's world. Mm -hmm. I've I've tried to reach people. From standing on the outside in my world. So right. I'm in my world, this doing their world. I try to yell, hey, 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 yeah. come over here. It don't work. Yeah. You gotta go down there with them. Yeah. And you gotta eat some bread with them. Yeah. Play cards with them. You know what I'm saying? You, you have to interact and rub shoulders with them. Now, if you're not strong enough to do that, don't go. Yeah. And I couldn't go for a long time. I was quarantined for a long time. Yeah. Just me. In the house, looking at the walls, questioning life, yeah. wondering what's going on. God had to build me back over a series of years to when I can go out in the world and not get taken down by impulsive desires or this and that. You know what I'm saying? Now I can, I can walk in anybody's world and not be affected. Now, am I going to convert somebody or change somebody or influence somebody? It's a 50% chance. It's a 50-50 chance. But, you know... That's how I balance it, though, bro. You ha you got to go there. Yeah. You got to go in their world. You know what I'm saying? I think that was, um, for me, the difficulty in it. I, I, and I don't know. And I'm going to ask you if, if you get this, too. It's um, when you're trying to affect positive change and be the example and do the thing. And it's like having the temporary effect. Mm -hmm. You know how you're around people and they mm -hmm. see your light or mm -hmm. you're talking and it's good, but then they still got to go to their world mm -hmm. with all they support and cast mm -hmm. of negativity. Mm -hmm. Like the people who like, like that see you planted, mm -hmm. they right behind it, digging it up. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, just throwing salt on the soil, but scorching the earth. Mm -hmm. Like, like, cause it's like, like you say, when you, you, you're around it and you do these things and it's like, it's 50, 50 chance. Cause you like, Maybe maybe it'll impact, maybe it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Was there a point where before you got to that place where mm -hmm. you felt like you're going to like show or help certain people and then having to realize that certain people just don't want the help or certain people like you can't reach everybody? Yeah, for sure. I think at one point we all try to be a superhero and mm -hmm. try to save everybody. Then I had to learn you, you can show love to everybody, but... You have to have boundaries. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, some people can be in your inner courts. Some people, you know what I'm saying, you can toss a little bread to them. And some people, you got to, you know what I'm saying, throw it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Far, long yeah. distance. God will show you who you can bring into your inner courts, who's going to receive it the most. Yeah. God going to show you who, they not ready, but stay connected with them. Yeah. And God going to show you by, <laughs> they not ready. You know what I'm saying? You need to, and I have several of those people. I have people that I love so much that I got to cut them off. Because yeah. if I get around them, they're going to bring me down because I love them so much. Yeah. They got to be all the way over there. I got partners in the hood. They're not ready to come over, but when they see me 
they 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 raise to get something from me, not right. financially, but yeah. something spiritual or you know what I'm saying, uh, intellectual. They willing. Then I got people who's ready to come out what they got going on and ready to ready the few the like it's yeah. like the the majority are the outside a little bit are you know what I'm saying in the mid range and then you got a few that's ready you know what I'm saying yeah. they down and they can receive and actually make a change you know what I'm saying so I see it all and it took me a while to get to that point but we're called to certain people you can't right. you know what I'm saying you can't give your all to everybody yeah no and that's a, definitely like that's one of the things like even from um like we talk on a spiritual level and like like to an extent like what I do with my company is my ministry mm -hmm. like, like I take this stuff very seriously mm -hmm. when I deal with independent artists because they're not artists they're people mm -hmm. and especially our culture mm -hmm. I think like you know we, we don't have a lot of access to mental health care and I feel like music is therapeutic art is therapeutic creativity but our culture puts so much emphasis on the monetary side of things mm -hmm. that's something that should be a uh, positive outlet turns mm -hmm. into anxiety and stress for most people. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who do music that it's just a hobby, and mm -hmm. it should be just yeah. a hobby, and it's okay for mm -hmm. it to be just a hobby. But it's like, oh, you still doing your little music thing? You're yeah, too old yeah. to be doing your. Yeah. Thing. It's like, bro, like you don't tell someone who going to LA Fitness to play basketball that that works at UPS that same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you doing your little basketball thing? You ain't going to the NBA, like. Yeah. And so it's like in this space where serving creatives and finding space for creatives um, but then also helping those who are at that point where they are trying to do it professionally mm -hmm. and and giving them the real tools and the knowledge and the access and stuff and uh, when I was younger I, I felt like I was in that same space where I thought everybody help everybody make money and, mm -hmm. then, and it took me a while to mature and see like Oh no! This guy's just doing this for fun, and, yeah. And it, and it's like, and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> and realizing out of court, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. So like, I definitely like I um I like definitely can resonate with what you're saying with that, and like even how we um, structure what we do with our members and our subscribers and all that stuff, and even now with some of the people that we're starting to manage um, that really are trying to tap in and get the help to get to that next level. Mm -hmm. um, so now, like, so you 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 just started a new event series. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like, what was the inspiration for that? Okay. So um, last year, man, I went through a very tough time. Me and my family, you know what I'm saying? 2023. Uh, it was not that good, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So uh, me and my whole family, we had to move back into my folks' house, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? From April to December. Mm -hmm. You feel me? From April to December. Back in my folks' house. I got three yeah. kids and a wife. You feel me? Yeah. So um, I I try. I, I work various different jobs. Right. I'm a professional content creator. Right. I did it for rappers and celebrities. I did um I did it for Crypto Dollar. Yeah. <laughs> I was running Crypto Dollar page uh for a couple months. Realized you know what I'm saying it's stressful uh and you know it wasn't paying enough so I left that. Um um I started doing a government job for the city of. South Fulton, mm -hmm. running their page for the mayor and doing all type of different stuff. Um, and I was trying to balance that. I was trying to do my music, balance work, balance getting my family to a new place. I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I had to just make a conscious decision that, you know what, let me just focus on this gig I got right now. Let me focus on my family, my mental health, and I'm going to get off social media. I got off social media in December. I didn't get back on to March. <laughs> That was a couple weeks ago. Yeah. During that time, I moved my family out. We got a new place. We got a new crib. Got my bag right. You know what I'm saying? I'm back doing music full time. And I learned social media. We tend to get on social media and just do what we want to do. Post right. a picture. Post our song. Post what we But there's an actual certain way that we are to use it. Right. And I would scroll and I would see these videos of them teaching us how to use social media. And I'll just skip it, skip it, skip yeah. it. One day I actually sat and I said, let me read this. And these folks are giving you the game of how to make your page grow. Yeah. So I took some information from a couple white middle-aged women mm -hmm. on how to grow your page. And I applied it to my music. So when I got back on in March, I said, let me try some of this stuff. So I started making beats. I started putting little captions up, using certain hashtags, putting certain text on my screen. And I did that twice a day. 
twice a day, twice a day. In one week, I gained 2,000 followers. Mm. The next week, I gained another 2,000 followers. Another week, which will be last week, I gained another 1.5 followers. Mm. I gained 5,000 plus followers in two and a half weeks. Mm. So I'm trying to gauge who are these people that's following me off my beat making videos, going viral, they're having all type of conversations. It's fellow producers. Right. It's not just your average everyday person. Like it's it's a it's a boatload of producers. Right. So I'm looking and I'm like, okay, that's why certain posts don't do well. Because this whole five thousand, four thousand of them are producers, right. music lovers. So I said, I need to, I need to captivate this somehow. I need to try to, what can I do with this? So some said, build the community. You know what I'm saying? So I'm learning, and as you're doing now, like I, I, I talked about this, um, but I'm learning to, once again, highlight and promote others, put other people on a platform other than myself. So I said, you know, yeah, I'm 217, this and that, but what if I do an event where people can come and play their beats and be heard and get feedback and stuff like that? So I said, I'm going to do a producer open mic. And I was overwhelmed with how many people came, like 15 people came. On a week worth of promotion And they enjoyed it And people are saying When the next one When the next one So that's how I came about it man You know what I'm saying Just um, Tapping into social media Building my strategy Growing my page And tapping into Actually who's following me And catering to them mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying And Translating social media Into the real world Getting these producers Off my page Into a real physical place and growing it and highlighting others, doing for others. And who knows what that's going to do for me? Who knows what all this as you, you know what I'm saying, reopening and rebranding and opening up your facility to others and extending your arm to other people. Who knows that, what that's going to do for you? You know what I'm saying? So that's how that came about. And um, the second one is going to be on April 12th. You know what I'm okay. saying? And um, yeah, man, I'm, I need all the collaboration I can get. You feel right. me? Yeah, for sure. And so you're looking to do like make this a monthly thing. I want to do it bi weekly. Bi -weekly? I want to do it every man because I, I mean I just learned how I got to this point now. Uh, it's almost like a reignition in my career, even though I don't have no hit out, even though I don't have nothing. You know what I'm saying? Strictly off social media, word of mouth. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting some traction back. Um, I can't stop momentum. You can't stop once a month. Man, you'll lose people in the cracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people gonna get excited, but if every two weeks you're doing it, yeah. every day you posting. Every day you out. If every you're making progress, you land some type of something. Yeah. You know it's only gonna grow and grow. So no, I can't do it once a month. We got to do it bi weekly, man. We got no to problem. do it bi weekly. <laughs> I feel that. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the people watching, yep, let them know where they can follow you at so they can yes. tap in with the community and mm -hmm. get the schedule for any upcoming ones. Yep. 217 ATL is my Instagram. 217 ATL. And that's for all my social media: um, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. And that's where, yeah, I really be at. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Okay. Well, man, we about to get back out here. For sure, man. It's lit out there. Things. It really is lit out here, man. <laughs> right now, man, we at the uh, content creator kickback. And, you know what I'm saying? What, what's the name of this? I making know it Studios. Making, making the Studios. Making we in Making the studios. studios, man. And it's lit out here. We having a good time. They got food. You know what I'm saying? They got chicken scripts. They got uh, fruit and uh, Hawaiian some, sweet rolls. Some vegan they options. Know, so, they so. know how to treat something. <laughs> they know how to treat us. <laughs> so, we having a good time. Yeah, I'm ready to go back out there, too. You know what I'm saying? All right. Definitely appreciate it. Thank you, you so much. Out. For sure. For sure. All right, we out.